uh, inshallah, we're going to continue on in the fourth chapter. But before I do that, somebody sent me an email or a text earlier asking me about, uh, I guess some people said that um, I had, uh, was, I was talking in, in, in the book club about a ma'noom min al-deen daruratan and mentioned something about, you know, people, there's a lot of Muslims now that are more identitarians. Just because you have a Muslim name doesn't necessarily mean you're actually a Muslim. Like a Muslim is somebody who believes in Allah, his messenger, and what the Prophet Sallallahu came with. And if you if you reject anything, what's known as ma'noom min al-deen daruratan. Darura here means badihatan. In, in other words, it's something that everybody should know. Now, that doesn't really apply to people living in the West, uh, Muslims, because that, the understanding that the ulama had for that was people who grew up around Islam and grew up around Muslims. And, and there are certain things that every Muslim knows because they grow up in a Muslim environment. So there could be people now, Muslims, that have Muslim names or they come from Muslim families. Um, when I was, lived in Southern California, there was an area where these Bengali farmers came in the 19... Uh, 20s, I think, and there were all these uh, Mexican Americans with names like Lydia Muhammad and uh, Fatima uh, Abid, and and they were uh, children of these uh, immigrants or grandchildren, but they weren't. They were Christians. They were Catholics. So, so they had lost. I don't know if their parents had been Muslim or not. So, you know, we kind of assume if somebody's from a Muslim country that they're Muslim, but there are now a lot of people even living in Muslim lands that don't really believe in Islam. There are many secular Muslims um, in all the Muslim countries now. Uh, I think the majority of Muslims uh, that, that live in Muslim countries still do believe in Islam, but there's a lot of confusion. We're living in a time of confusion, and it's very important for people just to not be so trigger happy you know, there's this kind of uh, desire just to kick people out of Islam very quickly. And people should be careful because the Prophet ﷺ said uh, that, or was reported to have said that, Man kafara Muslim kufri. Whoever uh, says somebody's a Muslim is not a Muslim, one of them is not a Muslim. In other words, because of your making takfir of a Muslim, that can take you out of Islam. And... Uh, so it's really important. And then in, in the Seer Alam and Nubala, which is an extraordinary biographical dictionary of scholars up to Imam al Dahabi's time, um, who was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, Rahimahumullah. But he, he, in his chapter on, on Abu al Hassan al Ash'ari, he, uh, he mentions that Abu al Hassan al Ash'ari said in, in his latter days, لا نكفر أحدا يستقبل قبلتنا ويأكل ذبيحتنا You know, إنما هي ألفاظ نختلف في تأويلها Oh, كما قال, something like that, but I, that's pretty close. That we don't make takthir of anybody who faces our qibla and eats our dhabiha. Um, these are just semantical points that we're differing on. In other words, a lot of the disagreements about Muslims end up being dif disagreement over what words mean. And, and so even uh, Imam al-Dhahabi, ta'liqan ala hadhi al-karam, adding to what he said there, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ كَانَ الشَّيْخُنَا إِبْنُ تَيْمِيَ فِي آخِرِ حَيَاتِهِ And that was the way our shaykh was at the end of his life. كَنْ يَقُولُ لَا نُكَفِّرُ مَنْ يُوَاذِبُ عَلَى الْوُضُوءُ we don't make takfir anybody who's consistent in his wudu. Because the Prophet ﷺ said only a believer is consistent in his wudu. So it's, it's not the role of people. Takfir is, uh, you know, excommunication is a process, a judicial process in the traditional books of fiqh. And there is a, but this idea of just making takfir of people uh, is very dangerous. And so uh, to use a clip of mine, uh, to, to indicate somehow that I was meaning uh, somebody who uh, was in Scotland. You know, there's a man who apparently has the same name as I do. I think he spells it slightly different from me. So I got all these congratulations when he won the first minister of Scotland. But, to, to, you know, I think people should be very careful. Um, I mean, we, in our dean, 
uh, one of the creeds that some of you study here. I mean, woman, li uh, ma'lumun, woman, woman li ma'lumun dhurud min jihad min dinina yuqtaru kufran laysa had. ومثل هذا من نفاء لمجمعي أو استباحك الزنا فالتسمعي I mean that's Imam Al-Laqani been taught for 400 years in Al-Azhar you know, he says whoever rejects what's معلوم ضرورة بديهة so if you reject something known by everybody by all Muslims like you say prayer is not uh, an obligation or something like that so he's saying that that's uh, that is kufr it's, it's kufr and, the, and so the hukum uh, of ridda goes under that person of apostasy um, and so and then he says or something like that if somebody negates mujma'ali like something that's mujma'ali every it, there's no khilaf about it so if there, if there was a khilaf then you have to be very careful now there are many traditions in, in our tradition uh, uh, this is something the fuqaha talk about uh, the idea of ta'rid like there's when when you say something you can be sarih which is there's no ambiguity it's unequivocal and you're just very clear on what you say or there's the arabs were very very good at saying things and meaning something else or saying things in a way that the person hearing it thinks something but you actually intend something else so if somebody for instance asked a politician you know, do you think, uh, you know, same-sex marriage is a sin? And that politician says, no, I don't, I don't think it is. Well, you would have to ask, if he's a Muslim, you would have to ask him, did you mean for Muslims or for non-Muslims? Because there's an opinion, and this is called al-mukhatabun bil furu' and this is mentioned again in the books of Usul, al-mukhatabun bil furu' are people outside of Islam, are they responsible for the details of the Sharia or only for the usul of the Sharia. So the majority consider them to be responsible for the whole Sharia, the awamr and the nawahi. But there are many scholars and, and some of them, the majority, in like for instance, many of the Hanafi scholars, some of the really strong uh, Maliki, it's a strong opinion, it's not the dominant opinion, but it is a strong opinion in the Maliki method, that, uh, that they're not responsible, mutaqan. In other words, for the awamar and the way. Some say they're responsible for the, uh, the prohibitions, but not for the commandments. And their proof is that if, if a non-Muslim prays, he doesn't get the reward of the prayer. If he fasts, like if a non-Muslim fasts Ramadan, they might get some benefits from the, the intermittent fasting, health benefits, but they don't, it's not rewarded according to our tradition. They're not rewarded for fasting because they didn't. The ones that say that they're responsible, you know, So they, they say, what brought you into hell? And they say, we didn't pray. We didn't pay zakat. Uh, and we used to just uh, speak things with, uh, just inappropriately. And then we re rejected the Yom al-Din. So that's the proof that they use for... Um, for being responsible. So this is a khilaf, and it's a valid khilaf. So there is a hadith the Prophet said, al-dunya sijin al-mu'min wa jannatul kafir. The dunya is a prison for the mu'min because he is held to account for the furu' of sharia. So he can't do things, he might even want to do them. Some people might want to drink, but they don't drink because the sharia says you can't drink. But for the person who's outside of the faith of Islam, this is their paradise according to that tradition. And so that's the idea that they're not really responsible for the furu'ah, they're only responsible for the usul, meaning la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Once they accept that, then the furu'ah, the, the branches of the sharia become obligatory. So these are distinctions, they're important distinctions. But you know, my advice to the Muslims is to just be very careful about takfir. It's, an, it's not an easy thing. And then you can also end up being responsible if, if a Muslim does something crazy and thinks they're doing some kind of good deed, um, then you could be responsible. You could have, uh, you know, qadrullah, you could have blood on your hands for doing that. It's very dangerous to do these things. I mean, we're not qudat. You know, they say a du'at la qudat. You know, 
people that are calling to Islam, they're not judges. We're not judges. To be a judge, those are the people that would have to deal with something like takfir. But one should be very careful about um, making takfir. And people have made takfir of me, you know, and I just, subhanAllah. I mean, I, I know I'm a Muslim. Like, I, you know, seriously. And, although he's a perennialist. I'm not a perennialist. I've never, anywhere, nobody can find anywhere where I've ever uh, said I'm a perennialist. You know, ashaqaqta an qalbihi. I appreciate some of the extraordinary work that people from that, um, from that group of people have done because they have done some extraordinary work. So I'm not one to just dismiss uh, good work that's done, but I'm not a perennialist. Uh, my, my belief is that Islam is the final revelation and it, and it abrogated preceding revelations. That's my belief. And I've always held that belief since I became Muslim. So people say things all the time, and we'll meet on Yom Qiyamah, and good luck. Good luck. We'll meet on Yom Qiyamah, and there's a qantara, there's a place where Muslims are going to have to deal with the things that they did. Because people aren't going to get into gender. If you've wronged Muslims, I mean, even the goat has its day. The goat with the broken horn will have its day on the Day of Judgment for being butted by goats that had two horns. You know, the one with the broken horns. He'll have his day. Every goat has his day. So, I, you know, I just think it's really important for Muslims to just be very careful. You know, and, and you know, وَلَا يَكُونَ آمَنًا أَوْ زَاجِرًا إِلَّا ذِي فِي الْعِلْمِ قَدْ تَمَهَرًا أَوْ قَدْ تَبَحَرًا وَعَلَمَ الْخِلَافَ وَالْإِجْمَاعَ وَالْتَسَاءَ الطِّلَاعَ وَالْتِسَاءَ one of the Mauritanians, he said, you can't do Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi an Munkar until you get deep knowledge because there's so much khilaf in our community. You know, we, there's a lot of difference of opinion. So you could see something and think it's a Munkar, but it's not a Munkar. They're following a valid opinion. And they said about Imam al-Ma'ziri that his knowledge was so vast that he rarely condemned anybody because he would say, oh, maybe he's on the opinion of so-and-so. And it's very interesting, but there's so many people that just, you know, these, these uh, you know, have tongue will travel. You know, these people that want to go and make takfir of people and just, I mean, first of all, we're in, the, we're in the West. I think people should just leave people alone. Just do what you're doing. You can say, this is not an Islamic belief. We don't believe this. If somebody says something, you can say, this is not an Islamic belief and, and make that clear. But... You should be, I think people should be very careful with their deen. Don't, don't throw your deen away for some YouTube uh, likes, you know. I mean, one of the things Imam al-Ghazali says is that the, the ulama asu, and he's talking about ulama. He's not even talking about, you know, 